25 summers we back if you like the content hit the like button subscribe to the page so um you was telling me about you used to roll with the guys the five percenters in 87 and Elmira. can you uh tell me about that yeah when i came up north man the guards had a real strong movement man it was called the family you know five percenters was um Teachings of Elijah Muhammad and lessons in math by way of Clarence X. Thirteen Smith, otherwise known as God Allah, the you know, and they had this organization. And it wasn't so much looked upon as a gang, but because they studied their lessons and they learned their math and their culture and where they come from and where they're going, it fitted more something like slash religion slash a culture. But yeah, and I and I got part of them. I was part of them in '87 when it came up state. And for a couple of years, you know, I ran with them for a couple of years and they, you know, and then they started proving that they got into a lot of bullshit, them fucking with mooks and all kind of stuff too. But that was one of the strongest organizations in the state system when I first came through. It was the it was the five percent, the guards, yeah. When you say strong, strong in, in what aspect? They right? had numbers. They had numbers as people. They was at least three, four hundred strong. They uh, had access and people working in the law libraries. They had people stationed in various parts of the prison where, you know, an inmate needed access to get there to get something to or from. They were stationed all over. They worked down in the infirmaries. You know, they worked in the chapel areas. They worked in the auditorium. They worked in the kitchens and the mess halls. So, yeah, the guards were strong and they, was, they, they, they could be felt throughout the whole penitentiary, the whole state penitentiary in New York State. So they was they were in the law libraries. You said that they um were they able to pull off any appeals or anything like that. Did you? Yeah, quite a few of the brothers were jailhouse lawyers, man, and they was very good with doing, uh, litigating and helping brothers, uh, get rid of some felonies, old felonies and current cases and stuff. Yeah, they helped brothers with Article seventy eight, and helped brothers get appeals to get back down to Rikers Island, in hopes for getting their court their case reversed and going home. You know. Yeah, it's a couple of jailhouse lawyer dudes. Shout out to Majesty. He's still locked up too, man. He's one of the greatest jailhouse lawyers that I know, man. He's been in there for like 35 years now. That he couldn't do nothing for himself, obviously. Nothing, absolutely, man. Nothing, man. But uh, like I say, man, he resourced all remedies and everything like that. And it usually be those type of brothers that make the best jailhouse lawyers because they turn their cause into fighting for somebody else to get out of penitentiary because all the doors was kind of basically slammed. They closed on them for their cases. So if someone is a jailhouse lawyer, are they um, biased to who they help? Or is it like everybody stick with their own? So it's like if it's a, a guy and he's a, I don't know, a Spanish jailhouse lawyer, will he help a Jewish guy or will a black guy help a white guy? Like, how does that work? See, the way they got the penitentiary set up and is designed, it's designed to keep us segregated and to keep us amongst our own. So this this the thing is common with this uh, racial thing and all of that. So if you got about three, four brothers that work up in the lower library, and one is Spanish, one is black, and the other one is Muslim or whatever, quite naturally they're gonna help their own people, man. When they come in there, and they need help because that's just the way the penitentiary is designed. That's the way they got us put together. That's the way they separate us and keep us thinking that we need to only be with our own kind. But you know, but but. The good jailhouse lawyers, man, know the law is the law, man, and that's the key to the law book that's going to get you out. And if they genuinely know what they're talking about with litigating, they usually help you no matter what color race you is, you know. So so for the public that never been in prison anywhere, like, what is the library? Is it just set up like a real library with books in it? Like, you know, yeah, give us a visual small. of that. Small, it's secluded, it's small because you're dealing with law books, you're dealing with supplements, textbooks and you're dealing with those like that so there's not as many books as a general library that has fiction and non-fiction autobiographies and stuff like that this is just a library set up with all these books federal books state books citational laws all of these are law books that have laws that have been signed illustrated by judges man and these are, are outcomes to cases and these are pertinent cases and when you get these facts and they put together they become or uh, case low case numbers and these case numbers could be referred to help you with a situation that happens five years down the line does every prison have a law library yes they do is that like a law or something that's like mandatory 
money was appropriated for them to have a lower library before they was gave money to appropriate to have a general library. Now, quite naturally, if you get a bunch of prisoners that's thrown in the penitentiary and they lack in education, all of that, which means a lot of them are, are ignorant, they can't read or write, so they're illiterate. So you will put a general library with fiction and things that can help you read. But these law libraries are mandatory for the penitentiary because brothers are coming upstate with time. And, and there's a such thing as appeal process and appeal system. So you have to have the library to have the guide to help you get back into the court and perhaps get an appeal. So um, who gave the um, money for the law libraries and um, when did it happen? And was there libra law libraries your whole 25 summers upstate New York? Yeah, it's law libraries in there ever since I came to the penitentiary. Accordingly, the money is supposed to be appropriated by our, our the New York State's comptroller, man. And then I guess it was signed by the governor, man, because the governor was over prisons, man. And then you got the commissioner. So they got these budgets for the facility. They can get this. So the, the budget was to um, build furnish the books mm -hmm. or build the library? Build the library and furnish the books. And so most of the, a lot of the books are being donated too. They're coming from different ways out there, Park Row, places that have uh, Cardoza School, the law school, Columbia University Law School. These places donate a lot of their old material, which still in current, the cases are still current. But they donate their material to the penitentiary system to help the brothers in there that can't afford attorneys. You can study your own case, dissect your case, and you can ultimately represent yourself in court. Hmm. The ultimate jailhouse lawyers. Mm -hmm. So um, when you said they built a law library in the prison, um, where so they just did they build it attached to it, or did they build it in the building? House? It's inside the building. It's in the building, which you like go on a program. You go in the vocational shop, you go in the school, you go in the, to work or anywhere. It's in the it's in the facility. So they just took a room in the facility, basically. Right. Yeah. So who built the law library? The prisoners? I don't know. Nah. Nah. Was an outside contract? Yeah, that had to be outside contractor because when the prison system came about, libraries was implemented up and running before the mess halls were. So because because the fact is that you're coming up to the penitentiary. And you just blew trial. You just served 25 to life. And they send you from Rikers Island to upstate. You can't afford not to do nothing because time, every day ticking, is a day that you become barred from the court system. Statue of limitation. Your time ran out. You have a 60-day period to, to file a notice of an intent to appeal. And then you got to get your butt in that lower library. And you got to get your proof and your facts and all your evidence and exhibits together. And you got to push them into what they call uh, the uh, short term court, special term court. Special term court is in Albany, the state of the, or the capital of New York. And in special term court, you have a bunch of judges, what are called magistrates. And magistrates uh, read your case, view your case, put it on the calendar, and render a decision. The decision if you're gonna right bring him back down so we can retry him or in another check in another capacity or give him a full reversal you know what I'm saying a non biased full reversal where he's uh cut from the penitentiary release free no parole no anything you know overturn the case partially turn the case mm. so bring him down I mean bring you from the prison back to Right, back down to Rikers Island, man, where it all started from. It would be basically like a county. If you was from any of the five boroughs or Long Island and you was apprehended for a crime, you probably nine times out of ten, you'll land on Rikers Island. So the other people that's from like Rochester, Syracuse, Buffalo, they go back to their county jail, right. respectively. Right, their counties has a jail holding for them too, yeah, until they really release to the state, uh, to be state property. 